Well, cool. We're a minute after. We still got people coming in. Um, we had a couple hundred people register for this thing and um, scores and scores coming in yet uh, as we're talking. So um, we'll do kind of the normal uh, start up here and take it a little bit slow, but uh, let people get in. But thanks for joining. So this is fun. These are cool events. I uh, hope you have fun. We give away some cool prizes. Um, I'll do some intros here uh, and then give you a, a lay of the land and let you know how this event's going to go, um, how you can win some prizes and, and what you can come away with afterward besides the prizes. But we're going to talk about Office 365 data, how to protect that data. Um, and then we're going to give away some cool stuff. So uh, that's the rough agenda. Uh, my name is Dirk Ahrens. I'm the president at Virtual Systems, and we're a cloud service provider. So uh, that's the fancy way of saying we know cloud very well. We do cloud very well. We are a, a VMware uh, cloud verified partner, which means out of VMware's 35,000 partner network, we are one of less than 250 who get this cloud verified badge. Uh, so the top 1%, uh, one tenth of 1%, I guess, um, in terms of being able to display cloud uh, expertise within the VMware framework. We're also a huge partner with Veeam, love Veeam, and we've been a partner with them from the beginning. Um, and that's who, you know, we're talking about some backup and data management stuff with them today. Uh, and I'll kick it over to my counterpart, Corinne. I'm a technologist with Veeam Software. Veeam Software is a leader in the backup industry and one of the number one leaders in the Office 365 solution. We are one of the most deployed solutions out there on the market because we're doing something right here. Um, I, I think I saw it's like 99,000 now. I think we have a slide in here that's old and it says 55,000, but somebody else is talking like not over 99,000 businesses are using Veeam for Office 365 backup. Right, and in over 30 different countries. So before uh, we go too much deeper here, let's go ahead and kick it off. Okay, so here's how this event works. So it's a little anti-webinar. Um, we got a Q&A going, and uh, the vision behind these kind of live session events is let's just get a bunch of people together, do some Q&A, talk about a thing, um, and hopefully we all kind of learn from each other. So you can ask questions in there in the chat, you can comment, you can upvote things, but you know, Corinne and I are not under the assumption that we're the smartest people in this room. That's probably some of you. Um, so go ahead and you know, ask some good questions, answer some people's questions if you get the chance. We're gonna talk kind of um, from the bachelor's level classes down to the master's level classes at the bottom of the hour, or back to the top of the hour again. Um, so it will get increasingly technical um, and we'll end with just Corinne showing us like how to do some stuff in uh, Veeam's Office 365 backup tool, how to set stuff up. And, but I hope it brings up some questions for you. Um, and, you know, I hope you get the opportunity to learn from the other people in this room here. Um, so often in IT, we like, we're like heads down. There's people right down the street or right virtually, you know, next to us here in this room. They're solving the same problems you are. And we don't often get the chance to like put our head up and just ask people questions and how are you doing this thing or why are you doing this thing or whatever. So hopefully this is some of that for you. And to incentivize that, we're giving away some sweet stuff. So if you participate in that part, if you ask some questions, uh, if you comment on somebody's thing, the reason that you couldn't uh, join anonymously, you had to put in a name is because we want your name and we'll give you some prizes. So um, we're gonna put your name on a wheel. So there's some people in the forum here with us uh, Nate and Chris on virtual systems team, they're going to be interacting with you in the Q&A. They can answer some stuff. Um, but also uh, Katie from Veeam is here and she's going to be taking everybody's names down, throwing them onto a prize wheel. We're going to take a break halfway through this event and then at the end and give away some $100 gift cards, some $250 gift cards, uh, and then a next gen console where you can take the cash. Um, at the end. So um, then if you want to keep the dialogue going, um, you'll get some emails afterward. You get a video of this recording, you get the presentation stuff, and you get the Q&A if you feel like, oh, that was a good question. I wish I remembered that. You can kind of go through that if you'd like afterward. Again, like we want to just equip you with good resources to keep solving backup and DR problems. So, um, but then you'll also get the opportunity to continue the dialogue with some Veeam engineers. Um, and if you want to do that on a 20-minute call, you get another $50 gift card. So, um, uh, you know, the prizes are cool, but the dialogue hopefully is more valuable. So, that's the vision behind this thing, and hopefully it's uh, hopefully it's fun for you. 
I can already see some great questions coming in through chat here Good. asking about if we can do granular restores and we're going to do some live demos on those restores and all the granular processes and types of data that we will be able to restore within this console a little later. Sweet. Good stuff. So here's the agenda. So we're just going to kind of Again, bachelor's level to master's level. We're just going to talk kind of generally, why are people doing Office 365 backup? What are Microsoft's limitations? That kind of stuff. If that's, you know, if you're like way beyond that, um, sorry, you got to kind of put up with that stuff. Sometimes it's fun to just kind of think about that again and understand Microsoft's limitations and why people have to or want to bolt something on to Microsoft to control their data better. But that's where we're starting. Then we're going to get a little deeper into Veeam, some of the new features that just came out with V5 around Teams, especially. Uh, then we're going to do the live demo. So that's the jam. So I'm going to start, I'll be talking a little bit more at the beginning. Um, Corinne, if you see good questions in there while I'm talking, feel free to interrupt with some stuff if it gets a little boring, but um, we're starting with why, and then Corinne's going to take it at about the halfway point and she'll be talking more at the end. So um, here's why, why are people doing this Office 365 backup stuff? Um, because Microsoft doesn't do everything. So Here's the main reasons. Um, if you're not doing it today, maybe you know this stuff, but accidental deletion uh, is what is the biggest one you'll see on the next slide. So retention policy and confusion gaps um, is, so the next three are really kind of tied, um, but uh, you know, legal compliance requirements are in there, data migrations, but then of course, ransomware is part of that as well. So how often is it happening? Um, yeah, quite a bit. So Veeam did this survey, I think two years ago now, like 2,200 people um, and asked them, you know, why, why would you do this solution? And like I said, uh, user error, accidental deletion, the number one, um, then like ransomware stuff comes in next. And then if you're having this conversation, I'll tell you, this is a conversation we're having a lot with customers who say, I don't know what our business is doing in terms of retention policy. Like nobody really knows. People talk about it at the higher levels. It doesn't really trickle down to IT. We think we should be storing it longer. There's different, you know, conversations about we store this data for this long, that data for that long. Um, that, if that's you, I'll tell you that's very typical. Um, we hear that quite a bit. And so often the solution is like, all right, let's just, can we store our data forever? How do we do that? And then like not storage intensive way. And, and you'll see in a little bit, this is a great way to tackle that and cover all the you know retention policy stuff. So ransomware, this is um, you know the it was the third biggest reason when they did when Veeam did this survey. I think it is um, probably the biggest one we come across. It is the most common discussion I think that we're having with customers today. So at the time of this survey, they were saying 93%. I would say I mean I literally if you're a business with a pulse, I can't imagine you're not getting you know attacked with ransomware stuff. At a bare minimum, you're getting emails um, that say, you know, hey, click this link. But I mean, virtual systems is not huge. We're getting it every day. Uh, we look at our customer base. We talk to everybody there. Um, they're getting it often every day. So the idea of how we protect our data is like front of mind, I think, for everybody. Um, you see also, um, you know, I think there's a lot of concern in the backup community about are our backups being attacked? Are they being targeted? Um, I think, yeah, here it is on this one. So 70% um, of customers are saying, yep. I mean, we're, we're concerned that the backups are being targeted. How do we do a tertiary copy? How do we do immutability and just freeze our backups so that if and when we get ransomware, we're still good. And you'll see later that's part of a solution like this too. So you remember Garmin, I don't know if you were part of this conversation, but I've got a Garmin watch. I love the Garmin stuff, but they also do, I mean, they support our military branches. They support, um, you know, a lot of, uh, folks who are out in airplanes, boats, traveling, um, and they were hacked end of last year. Uh, they tried to fight through it, if you remember, it took a couple of days, and then they said, let's just pay $10 million to Evil Corp. So um, they made it out of there, but I mean, it's getting everybody. If it can get them, it gets everybody. So, um, so let's think about retention policies. Again, back to kind of why this is happening. Um, Microsoft does this, I don't think we have the slide in this deck, but they do this shared responsibility model, it's called. So they're like, you know, their posture is we will hold some of your data for some of the time, but we're not all about, you know, accommodating everybody's retention policy. So um, here's what it looks like a little bit. So you see a lot of stuff, you know, you look at SharePoint, OneDrive, um, there's first stage recycle bin, second stage recycle bin, um, which we were just talking with a customer this morning who 
had trying to find a file using their Veeam backup stuff and couldn't find it, ended up being in second stage recycle bin. And then they're permanently Microsoft, they permanently getting rid of data that sits in some of those things after three months. Well, as you'll see, the average length of time from data compromise to discovery um, is 140 days. So what, four or five months? Um, so, you know, that's not, that's not making it there. So you remember, I don't, if anybody is following this, um, uh, the solar winds incident, I mean, I think it was, what was it, February, March that they're saying solar winds compromise started and we heard about it eight, nine months later, something like that. So um, it's crazy. Um, so here's where Veeam's coming in. You can kind of see the challenges here. Uh, Microsoft's not the data owner, right? Um, they, they don't position themselves the way, they don't think of themselves that way. Um, you can archive with Microsoft, but it's still single copy. Um, so you're not creating a copy and creating a secondary, you know, ability to go grab that data in case something happens at the primary. So there's obviously problems with that. Um, uh, some people use lit hold. Uh, I don't know if you've talked about that or thought about that in your organization. It's a thing. I mean, you certainly can. Um, but it, again, you're talking about a primary copy and you're solving for a backup, something that's not intended to be a backup solution. Um, so you put Veeam in the mix and um, now you're in control of the data in its entirety. So top to bottom, um, soup to nuts, as they say. Um, now you can d dictate the retention policies um, you get lots of restore methods. You're not locked into how Microsoft does it. Um, so you create a backup repository. You can create secondary, tertiary copies. I mean, um, just gives you a lot of flexibility. This is the one. This is a slide. 55,000 organizations. That's old. I think it's up to 99 or more now. So do so you remember just this to slide? touch yeah, on ahead. that uh, litigation hold that you were talking about, even from Microsoft, litigation hold is a legal compliance solution to hand over data in some type of court case. This isn't a backup, and they also specify in all of their documentation, this is not a backup of your data, and it doesn't make you uh, more responsible for being able to restore that back to the original location, or it doesn't make Microsoft more responsible to restoring back to the original location. In fact, with litigation hold, you have to download that data and then manually upload it in most cases, and it doesn't contain the original metadata and settings for those original locations. So you are missing some granular restore options for sure, and you're using a legal compliance solution for a backup in your infrastructure if you use litigation hold. Yeah, good stuff, good insight. Um, so the move here, I'm reading some of the Q and A, this is really good. There's a lot of good stuff there. So I think maybe we could take a break and, but here's the move, right? You go from this thing where, you know, Microsoft's doing the shared responsibility model where you just say, look, I'm, I'll take responsibility. We'll manage everything. I mean, we're, the cost on this is low compared to any other thing, probably you're building into your backup and DR infrastructure. Um, so the ability to kind of take control and manage everything across the board. Um, the peace of mind that that delivers uh, is pretty strong. So, man, we are already up to spinning a wheel. Um, how are we doing on the wheel spin, Caitlin? Are we, uh, how's that looking for names getting in there? I see at least 49 questions in there. Um, Corinne, while we uh, maybe wait on Katie for a second, any Q and A that you saw that looked pretty good to answer? So the first question that kind of hops or jumps out here is talking about Microsoft 365 license, which types of Microsoft 365 license are required in order to be able to use our product, which mm -hmm. maybe we can cover a little bit how our licensing is different than the Microsoft licensing. Yeah, I mean, you're, yeah, that's a good point. I didn't know you're turning it over to me to answer that, but um so the Microsoft or the Office 365 backup license with Veeam covers all of those things. So you can, you don't need a specific Microsoft or uh, Veeam license in order to cover uh, your Office 365 stuff and, right. and, and vice versa. And we are licensed per user. If you have a Veeam license for that user, you can back up all of the applications under that user in the infrastructure. Yeah, good call. So Michael Murphy in your school, yes, you can uh, isolate whatever user groups you want to. So the question is, can we, do we have to back up the whole organization? Do we have to back up students and everything? No, um, you can back up 
uh, whoever you want to there. So we, we build those groups and virtual systems will help you build those if you want. Um, or you can do it on your own. You can work with Veeam on it, but um, you don't have to back up the entire organization. And I see some great questions here about the restore options and the granularity of that. We will be doing a demo of exactly what you can restore and you can restore all the way down to attachments to emails, individual files in OneDrive and SharePoint. So um, we'll get to a lot of these later. I see a bunch of those questions here in the chat. Yeah, cool. Katie, how you doing? Can we uh, yeah, let's... do a wheel spin? Let's do it. Okay, let me give you the screen share. Or can you just take it? I will take it. So this is, we're going to do three spins, 100 bucks each. Thanks for participating in the Q&A. This is good. A lot of good questions. There it goes, 100 bucks. Don, congrats, first winner of the day. I think it was the first question of the day too. So if you win, you're going to get um, an email from us uh, to tell you how to claim the prize. If you do wanna donate, you can, um, or you can just take a gift card either way. So we'll be following up with you. Tyler Koistra, congratulations. Thanks for asking a question. No double winners today. So if we forgot to take your name off and land on you twice. David, we're gonna have to figure out what S stands for, but I don't blame you for wanting to protect your privacy. All right, pass back to you. Cool. Uh, let me see. Okay, can you see this again? Good, you can see it. Corinne, help me out. Okay. Yes, I can see it. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so um, we were practicing this thing yesterday, uh, Corinne and I, and she was like, hey, I think after we spin the wheel, it'd be a good opportunity for just to talk about architecture and we didn't have a slide on it. So we had to whip something up really quick and this is what we got. So this to just kind of help you visualize what this thing looks like. So you got your Office 365 data in the little blue cloud at the top. And you know that's Microsoft, that's Azure, right? That's like Microsoft data centers. So that's where your, your data is staying. You're using Veeam, so the orange block under it um, to do backup. So there's a gray storage repository and a purple one. You following, yep. Gray one could be on-prem for you. Could be you're just doing this Office 365 thing. You wanna throw it on-prem, great. Um, could be the purple one, that's virtual systems. So that's object storage, super cheap and deep. Um, you can throw it there. Great. Super fast recovery times either way. So that's your choice. Look over at the left-hand side. Um, you can see there's two ways to manage it and really a portal for it. Um, so you can use Veeam running on your own infrastructure. You've got Veeam licensing, or maybe you don't, whatever. Um, and you can use that console to run it. So you've got proxies there. They will help push your data, manage that for you. Great. Um, you can also deploy this as like a fully managed solution where you use our portal. Um, same thing. I mean, you get a vCloud director portal. You're managing it with Veeam that's running on our infrastructure, though. Those proxies are, you know, ours. So if you just said so, uh, kind of two ways to think about it, you manage it or we manage it. Um, either way works well. And then um, go back to the right hand side. Look with me down toward the bottom. You want to recover stuff. That Veeam Explorer is what does it. It goes, grabs data wherever you tell it to, and you can recover it as an email attachment. You can save it as a file. You can export it to PST. So a lot of different recovery options for it. Um, I thought I saw somebody asking in the chat about kind of recovering from a DR perspective. Can we use this to um, recover in a, in a DR scenario? And you can. Um, I think that probably takes some more conversation. Um, just helping think through what that DR scenario means to you. Um, but uh, I know we've helped customers do that too. So 
hopefully that makes sense. So that's the overall architecture. That's kind of what we're talking about, how you can piece it together. So Corinne, you want to talk a little bit about uh, V5 enhancements and a little more what features are happening inside of Teams? Of course. Of, uh, <laughs> so if you haven't already heard, Veeam now supports Microsoft Teams uh, backup, which includes the metadata on the back end. And we'll cover this a little bit more granularly in the following slides, what that means. But beyond just backing up that application, we deployed a new application explorer because we now support a new application, which helps present that data in a format that makes sense to the type of data that we're restoring. We've also have faster enumeration from object storage. We have better technology in the back end for that. We've improved the handling and parallel processing for SharePoint sites and lists. And we have, um, we'll restore or show some demo on that restore functionality here in a little bit. You can go to the next slide and we'll cover how the Teams application works. So understanding how Microsoft Team works is understanding that it's not a self-contained application. It's actually an application that uses a lot of Microsoft backend technology like Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and OneDrive for Business. Whenever you're having a conversation with another user, you're actually using Microsoft Exchange in order to have that conversation through the back end, but then you have a front end application to make it right there for you and easy to access. Same thing with OneDrive. You're not just sending a file, you're using OneDrive for Business to send that file within the Teams application. And if we go forward, and I think one more. I just want to point out here, I mean, so I think this is a cool place where Veeam does differentiate because we run into the, excuse me, those competitive situations quite a bit where somebody says, hey, we're talking to whoever Backblaze or like Data or somebody else, and they also back up teams. And I think kind of the old model is like Corinne said, I mean, you can, you're backing up that data underneath in OnePoint and, um, uh, sorry, in OneDrive and SharePoint, I'm trying to combine. Um, and so, sure, by virtue of doing that, you're backing up Teams because Teams is kind of a UI, but you lose some of the nuances of backing up Teams. So, sorry, I just wanted to interject that a minute. And that that's, is a cool feature that this tool has. That's fine. So, just as you were saying, we originally backed up the OneDrive, the SharePoint, and the Exchange, and you're able to export that type of data for any type of compliance reasons. But what was really implemented in version five is the new Microsoft API for Teams, which allows us to tap into that backend metadata and configuration data. So we can now link each of the Exchange, SharePoint, and OneDrive uh, site data and know exactly which channel was uh, responsible for that, as well as the dates and times everything was configured for on the last modify. This allows us for more granular restore of even, say, tabs within those channels. Um, any type of conversations we're able to restore back for them to be able to be viewed. And it also is faster. You never longer have to export the data and re-upload it manually to get the data back where you expect it to be back to. And we'll take a look at the infrastructure as a whole here on the next slide. So from the same console, no matter if you run a cloud only environment or if you're still under a hybrid deployment, we're able to back up the same tenant under the same configuration console. No more hopping back and forth between additional consoles. No more going between administrator centers for Exchange Online or SharePoint or OneDrive in order to restore the data that you need. This creates an easy to use single interface. And we'll see within the demo, the application explorers have a similar look and feel with excellent types of advanced search. If you don't know exactly where data saved, you're able to search across your entire application for all users being backed up. Instead of having to go to each individual user's maybe site collection box in order to find a file to restore for even meeting a ticket request. We also offer a very agnostic view when it comes to the, where you want to store your data. You can store your data where it makes sense to your business, whether it's on your on-premises environment, 
creating an additional copy away from where your copy is currently. Or if you want to get on the band with the object storage, you can deploy as an Azure instance to a, a say blob storage. Nothing leaves the cloud, which can meet some compliance for certain companies, especially government organizations where you're not allowed to pull your data over the internet if you do a backup process. And with this, um, do you want to give us some of the advantages of using, say, virtual systems for a storage? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, you just were kind of touching on one right there, and that's, it could be a pro or a con, but, um, you know, we've got a lot of folks who will say, hey, my data is already in Microsoft. Why would I back it up to Microsoft's cloud and Azure? Um, so it's, you know, the differentiation, I don't know if you remember when Veeam came out with the 321 rule way back. Um, if you followed any of their marketing stuff, you remember it. And then it was like the 322111 rule or something. Which I call it the totally back wrecked zip that. code. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but the 321 rule was, you know, let's have it in two locations. Let's get one offsite um, was part of that. And so that's that's one version an or one benefit. Another benefit to using virtual systems as a repository in that case is kind of what I mentioned before. And that is the cheap and deep, like, hey, we can use the storage as we grow. We don't need to buy an appliance for this. I mean, we're talking about single digit dollars per terabyte of storage to get it into object storage. So the storage requirement, I saw some Q&A stuff where somebody said, how much data do we need for like a hundred person deployment? And you know, that depends on some factors, right? Um, so you can do this solution as just a per user model where you get unlimited storage for one year retention. Um, or you can do it where we split off the storage and you manage the storage separately, or we just let it grow separately and you pay per user and then per tier of storage. Um, so uh, there's usually some scoping that has to go into, you know, how much storage do you have? But some people like, let's just deploy that in a per user model. Then we get a year of retention, we get unlimited storage. Um, we'll also customize that stuff with you on, maybe you need two years retention, five years retention, unlimited storage, whatever it is. Um, so we can get into the weeds on, on that with you, but so that's it. I mean, the ability to kind of scale it out easily, that's a good, um, you know, I think, uh, piece for putting that storage with virtual systems, but also the, um, ability to kind of separate it from your own environment too. Thanks for asking the question, Corinne. Okay. We'll self -promo. And we wanted to talk about differentiators, why choose us and why choose virtual systems. It's the ability to move your data when it makes sense to your business. We don't do storage lock-ins, which means if maybe on-prem makes sense because you're only backing up email, but suddenly you have a requirement to back up SharePoint and OneDrive, which can be very volatile on data size when it comes to users adding large files, uh, you're able to move up to an object storage or using a provider storage to make sense for your business in order to still meet compliance too. We always want to meet compliance. Um, yeah, and can, I, can I jump in on that too? Because I think that's a spot where we do well, just um, building compliance into a lot of our solutions. So I um, have seen some people in healthcare here. Uh, and so building HIPAA into a solution is a big thing, um, which we do. Um, I know there's some uh, folks in the finance industry uh, that I see on here. So the opportunity to build in things like PCI compliance or SOC 2 type 2, that kind of stuff right into your solution um, is another good reason to work with a partner on it. I know I saw some questions about GDPR. Do you have any words on how you help meet GDPR compliance as well? Yep, you can build that in as well. Um, we can get into the technicals on how to do that, but um, so it's definitely an option. I saw that too. Thanks for asking. Awesome. So Another defining factor is when we come to the restore features, we have a main product called Veeam Backup and Replication, which we originally developed these application explorers that made data easy to restore, even if you're not that type of application administrator. And we took that same great technology that we've been working on and improving over the years and moved it into our Veeam Backup for Microsoft Office 365, giving the same easy user interfaces for each of the applications and restore that makes sense to no matter who has to do the restore. And the granularity within each of those restore options, not only restoring back to the original locations or entire mailboxes, but being able to restore individual items and exporting as well as saving those for any type of compliance, which allows for an e-discovery like process with our advanced search options. 
and you're able to email that file out as an attachment if you need to to an end user to meet a ticketing system compliance if you're not sure that file needs to be restored back to the original location or if you don't want to take those extra steps to download export move over and then email back to meet a ticket request it saves a lot of steps and processes for any type of service desk industry giving that a bet? no that was perfect um looking at some questions to restore to pst um can we restore a, a mailbox to pst Yes, all of our restore options for any of our consoles restore data, not in a raw data format, but in a format that makes sense to the application that we're working with. A great example is the Microsoft Exchange. We restore either to a PST or an MSG file, which is what you would expect whenever you're uh, recovering anything from Exchange, lists and documents for SharePoint, and of course, files for OneDrive, like any other drive. So Matt, I see your question about HIPAA compliance. Um, are there any issues related to HIPAA compliance? And so what we have found really is just your business's interpretation of how long you should keep the data is the one that most um, significantly relates to a solution like this. Um, you know, HIPAA by itself is not a thing. It's how states enforce HIPAA. And so that differs when we are serving customers in California versus Michigan or wherever. Um, and I'll, it's just one of those interesting things where you see the exact same type of business in two different locations, or sometimes even in the same location, solving HIPAA in two different ways. Um, so our team is working with a lot of folks in healthcare and we can, you know, give you some without giving customer names, of course, but we can just tell you, hey, we've heard of customers solving it this way or that way. But the one that we hear most in this solution related to HIPAA compliance is the length of time that some of them are choosing to keep the data anywhere from five to seven to infinity. Ooh, you want to do a demo? And if we're ready for the demo, I'm going to uh, get that started here. Let's see if I can um, answer any more questions here. Azure Supports, Gabriel, yes, it is a supported storage location. Yes, you can do it there. Rather, you do it with virtual systems, but you can do it there. Um, the only thing is, we, you know, you hear sometimes somebody says, I already have my data in Azure with Microsoft, but yep, works well. AWS is a good location. There's some other ones too. So, are we able to see the screen? I see it. Perfect. So, this is the Veeam backup for Microsoft Office 365 console. It's very easy to navigate. When you first get the software installed, you only need to add in your organization. And adding in the organization, you can select whether you're a Microsoft only organization, or if you do run a hybrid environment, you can select granularly which items you'd like to back up from each of those entities. And then we have many different authentication options. I saw a question earlier about needing to have a global administrator in order to back up, and that is not the case. You don't need an additional global administrator account in order to back up. You can even use an application and app password authentication process to keep everything more secure, which will also require an application password for restore. So no one's able to restore data without a second factor of authentication and the ability to remove legacy protocol interactions with any of the end sites, which makes it very um, friendly for any type of compliance that you may have to meet. After the organization is added in, you just have to make a decision about where you would like that data to be sent. Whether you want to work with an AWS repository, an Azure repository, work together with virtual systems to create something on-prem or through their providers. You're able to do that through here. You could make separate repositories based on the types and workers that are being backed up. So if you do decide to go with object storage, maybe creating separate segments for each department so that you can build those out could be an option that you choose. With any of our repositories, you have a ton of granular options for how long you'd like to keep that data for and how often you'd like that attempt retention to be applied to that data to help make any type of uh, buffer you need. Coming to the backup jobs themselves, they're very straightforward. You name your job and then you select what kind of scope you would like to back up. 
Whether you're just backing up your users, you can decide to use groups within your organization to break up based on groups, individual sites, of course, with version five teams, or you can choose your entire organization from your list here and granularly select whether you're backing up maybe just the mailbox, archive, OneDrive sites, or all of the teams within the organization to make a catch all backup group so you're not worrying about something getting missed because something changed in your organization and maybe the proper group was not applied to that user. The exclude scope is just as granular for the types of options that you can select and you could make a blanket all exclude group in your Office 365 groups and just put that in here to make sure things you don't want to be backed up don't get backed up from your organization. Selecting your backup proxy and your repository is right from this screen. And with your scheduling options, another differentiator from the field is you don't have to only back up your users once a day. You can back up any amount of increments per day that you choose, whatever makes sense to your organization at that time. If you do run on a schedule and you may have overlapping jobs, you're even able to buffer when those start so you don't have to worry about overconsumption of resources on your server to make sure you get those processes out. And one of my favorite things to do during any type of demo is to go delete some live data and have that restored back. And since we have a lot of conversation around Microsoft Teams right now and how that looks when we restore that back to the original location, I'm going to delete a file from Microsoft Teams under files. And I'm just going to select OSI and delete. Yes, I'm sure I want to delete. And we'll wait for that to disappear here. Before we get directly into Teams, I do want to give a quick overview of each of the other explorers. This right here is the Exchange Explorer. As you can see, these are all the mailboxes underneath of the backups. And you can back up and restore anything from calendars, contacts, your deleted items, or even your sent items and tasks within your list. You're not scoped into just the emails. If you want to use the advanced search, we have tons of different categories of fields, as well as the different conditions that make sense to each of those fields based on whatever your store scope is to be. Each of our explorers have the advanced search options. Coming into SharePoint, we're able to see all of the SharePoint sites with all of the documents and content underneath of each of those SharePoint sites, which makes better sense than saying contacts and emails like we do with our exchange. OneDrive, of course, is just a file explorer. So as we path down through here, we just expect to see all of the files in here as if we were looking at Windows File Explorer. And last but definitely not least is going to be our Teams, which we can see all of the teams that I have scoped within the backup process for my entire organization. And under the assumption that I have no idea where that file was saved, I'm going to see if I can even find that file through a search. I know I know the name of that file. Not sure if that's exactly the name of that file, so I'm just going to do a, a vague contains. OSI is all I remember. We'll do that search. And this will go through all of my organization backups that I've selected within my restore scope and search for the single OSI file. It only takes a couple of moments for it to go through because of our caching system. I can right click on this file and start the restore process directly from here but I'm also going to just open up directly to that location before starting that restore process to see where that document's gonna go back to. I could open up here to make sure it's the right file, see if there's any history or versions of that file. I can check that out to make sure I'm getting the right version and open up each of those versions to see if they're in the right scope. This one's going to restore back to the original location for me. But of course, I could save it if I needed or send it directly as an email attachment back to anyone that I need to send that to. In this case, I'm going to try to restore it back to the original location here. And it's going to ask me to authenticate. As long as I type that password right, it'll give me all of my options to be able to restore. If you do select multiple items to restore, but you're not sure if every single item is a new item restoring to that infrastructure, you can select changed items, you can select missing items. And something nice here is restoring only the latest version. Some documents, especially in shared types of sites, 
get updated maybe 10, 20 times a day, and there could be hundreds of versions of that file. If you only need the latest state of that file, you could save your restore time and processing by just restoring the latest version with this option right here. So let's go ahead and do the restore. And it'll process that restore through this window. Um, it'll probably finish before it even estimates that time. This, in this case, is going directly from object storage back to the original infrastructure. And it'll give us a complete discography of every item that was restored if we hit see more. And we can see that's successful. Just to confirm that's successful, we'll come back over to Teams and do a refresh on this page. And as we can see, the OSI file is there in the best format possible. Uh, we'll close that. It just needs to refresh again. Team's catching up. As cats. <laughs> nice. Are any of those your cats? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have that many cats. <laughs> did we have any questions right. about the restore process that came through? Yeah, we did. A couple of people were asking about restore times, and I think you covered that. Rayanna, I saw your question. Um, I get a lot of accidental deletions, like how long does it take to recover? Some users wait days to tell us. Um, yes, it's still recoverable is the, is the answer to the second part of your question. And hopefully you saw that it's pretty quick to recover. So we actually did some speed tests back when this product first came out with Veeam and we restored locally versus using object storage. Um, and the restore times were super quick in both, almost negligible difference and in some cases, restoring out of object was faster. Um, so real quick. A um, couple other questions um, around ransomware in particular. So um, Corinne, maybe you want to talk about immutability a little bit and how that functions or how that can function. So with Veeam Backup and Replication, we have added in the immutability um, option with Veeam Backup for Microsoft Office 365, we have the ability to offload to object storage. If you use ver versioning on your object storage, you're able to create extra versions and revert back to anything prior to a ransomware type of attack. And that's our recommendation at this time for immutability when it comes to Veeam Backup for Microsoft Office 365. Yeah, perfect. The other function of immutability is un the un unchangeable nature of it. So it's locked and if, if ransomware gets into your backups, it can't move, um, which you know, helps from a, for a variety of reasons as well when you're restoring that data. So yeah, thanks Corinne. Um, what are we at, 243? We can answer some more questions here. Um, Don, can I restore only uh, items for a short period of time no, you can restore um, for as much as you need. So everything's um, based on the repository retention that you can configure uh, yep. for the backup. Yep. So if you say we want to keep data for whatever, and that's part of the beauty of this, if you remember back to that slide that had like, you know, all the purple spots where, all right, and gray where like Veeam or Microsoft doesn't back up anymore and then it all got to like full green bars, that's you determining, yeah, let's back, let's keep all our data for two years, three years, five years, whatever. Uh, Jordan, kind of encryption. Uh, oh, for data in flight, I was gonna say data storage, but um, I don't know, Corinne, can you talk to encryption for data in flight? Well, any data that we get from the Office 365 environment would be through a secure path, just as if you accessed your SharePoint data by logging into those SharePoint sites. As for at rest, uh, we do have encryption or a password for object storage, being able to store that there. If you come into any of your object storage, it'll ask you to add in a password. I did not, I should have but uh, it is possible within the console here. Um, good question from Nathan. Can Veeam back up videos recorded? So you're recording your internal Teams meetings or whatever? 
Microsoft Streams is not supported at this time just because the backend infrastructure which streams kind of rest isn't accessible from the outside world uh, by API. So we're not able to back up that location. Great question. Uh, another one kind of related, all applications, does that mean Visio, Power BI, what about D365 environments if they're licensed? We currently only back up OneDrive, SharePoint, uh, Microsoft Teams, and Exchange. We are looking for all feedback though for applications you wish to be supported in the future. And that's the reason we now have Microsoft Teams. Great user feedback. Cool. Good questions. Uh, hopefully a lot of those are getting answered. I see, it looks like we've answered 96 of them so far um, through our team. Hopefully you're getting some good answers on that. If you are not, so we are committed to answering every one of these questions. So on a follow-up, you will get, if you typed a question in here and nobody answered it yet, um, you will get an answer over email from our team. So, um, some of these, I'm not totally un, uh, sure what we're getting at in the question, but any issues with restoring a SharePoint document, Corinne, um, or SharePoint versioning? The question is kind of around like, are there any issues or gotchas? Probably like, are people running into anything consistently there? The only thing that we can't support that's been requested is restoring cross tenant. We don't support restoring to another organization, but restoring back to the original location or exporting different versions of that file are as long as the backup retention includes that file within the scope, we're able to restore back any versions with all access and metadata that was applied to that version. Yeah, good call. And that actually hits at a couple other questions I saw about restoring cross tenant. So great questions. I see some other stuff around like certs and compliance. Um, so let me speak to that a minute. So somebody mentioned and I scrolled past it and as these are coming in, it's like moving the chat down and I can't find them back again. But um, somebody asked, are they, um, some providers are not like giving us the checkbox on that piece of compliance. How can you do that? And the answer is in some of the granular details. So we're not necessarily giving you a checkbox. Um, we are helping you meet that compliance, which means we're asking you questions about who's requiring the compliance and why and how they wanna see it. So is it your insurance company? Is it somebody who's auditing you? Um, what does it look like for them to see it? And then we're using the compliances that our team does. So for example, if it's like in the storage and software, we've got external teams, virtual systems does, that audit us and they give us SOC 2, Type 2, HIPAA, PCI, ITAR, you name it, right? And if there is a different one, I mean, it's literally everything. Um, and if there's a different one, we use the NIST framework to map that over to whatever compliance piece you are asking for. And then we demonstrate that, we show that through that external auditing team. Um, your question is, does that cost more money? It does not. Um, so we'll help you do that just as a value add. So that's how it functions. And that's kind of why a service provider, you'll see like nobody's really going to market and going, this is HIPAA compliant. It's kind of in the language though. We are meeting HIPAA compliance. Um, you know, who's asking for HIPAA compliance on your side? And then how do we show that this solution maps to it? So in a lot of cases, it's just for us, we give you an executive summary that shows HIPAA compliance on the infrastructure layer. That's all people need if they just wanna check a box. But in some cases it gets more complicated. And so we get after the details again, like who's asking you, how do they wanna see that? How they want that to be proven? We got a terrific team of compliance experts over here who can help you kind of figure some of that out. So great questions. So we had a good question from Joe about resource allocation in SharePoint and if Veeam would take up some of those resources by performing backups. In actuality, Veeam can save some of your compliance and resource allocation by backing up to a separate location. Whenever you're using litigation hold or in place hold with a SharePoint site, it takes up storage in your 
uh, recycling bin or second stage storage, which is a limited storage space. But if you lower the retention in that storage space or leave it as default and use Veeam as your extended storage space, you no longer have to worry about assigning extra resources to SharePoint. Cool, good stuff. That makes good sense. All right, we got about 10 minutes left. Um, I don't know if you saw any more, Corinne. We got to spin a wheel three more times, give away some bigger prizes. Um, let me ask this question. This one came in, it's like right at the end here. Um, Corinne, uh, somebody was told by a Veeam rep that Teams chat was not backed up, just the channels. Is that true? Going back to where the data comes from in the infrastructure, Teams channels are still backed up there or technically through the exchange, but right now channels are the only thing that's supported through the direct restore back to uh, Teams. Got it. So can a user back up a Teams chat between a couple people? Uh, a group Teams chat is still going to be through Exchange at this time. There are certain permission levels that Microsoft was requiring in order to restore back to those original locations, which could cause security issues in an environment for a global user having that type of permission. So we're so working yes, with them to get to grant their permissions, to make it secure. <laughs> yep, yep, got it. Good questions. Gilbert, I'll grab uh, yours as a last one here. What kind of RTO, RPO can Veeam support um, all the way down to seconds now with um, uh, the, latest, the, latest, the latest, sorry, iteration of V11, uh, which uh, allows for CDP, continuous data um, replication on, and that, that's just supported on site right now. So um, down to seconds for RTO, RPO. As for Office 365, you can set a very low scheduled time for your backup jobs and your RPO RTO will be as fast as your jobs can run, start, finish, and start up again if you need. Yep. Um, I don't know, uh, typical support hours for Veeam as we move over to the, Katie, I don't know if you're ready to grab the spinning wheel, go ahead and grab it. Yep, I'm ready. And do you know some support hours? Uh, support hours are going to depend on your support contract. Um, if you have a free contract versus having a standard support. So that'd be something you'd want to check out based on your support license. But it's if usually you do some of these based. solutions. Yeah, good, good question. And I think good practical question. If you do some of these solutions through virtual systems, your first line of support is us and we're 24 seven. Um, so and that's through any service provider. If you choose to buy your licensing through them, you can run that support as a first line of defense through them. So then it will depend on that service provider who you're buying licensing from. So this is, I'll kind of close up. I saw a couple questions around like, how do you pay for this or how much is this? So think in terms of, um, so you can again, buy it per license and you're in the neighborhood of like, it starts at about $3.50 per user or per mailbox or per license. Um, and then we've got volume discounts. If you're interested in some of that stuff, then we can start exploring it together through some of the follow-up campaigns that our team will do with you. Um, but again, you can just go up per license and pay, you know, less than the dollar range for the license and then buy the storage separately um, and manage it separate. So if you're bigger, we, on one of these slides, I think it mentioned that we're supporting uh, organizations that are doing five users and over 15,000 users. So um, there's a pricing model that will work for you. And Katie. I'm going to spin. Okay. So next spin, 250 bucks for this one, 250 bucks for the next one. And then the last one is a next gen console where you can take the cash if you're not a gamer. But Oh, there's Corinne's cat. Yeah. I was asking Corinne if her cat was going to make an appearance, but the benefits of working from home. Oh, retro consoles. Yeah, for sure. If you take the cash and buy retro consoles, Eric, good call. I don't see the um, screen moving for the wheel spin, Katie. 
Oh, I apologize. Okay, so Wallace Frist uh, was the winner of $250 Amazon. Oh man, we missed. Sorry, I thought I was sharing. <laughs> um, Roger Dills was the second winner for $250 Amazon. And Holy we've cow, got... we've done two spins already? Yeah, I'm sorry, I thought uh, I was sharing. <laughs> um, and now we have our last spin for the next gen console. Let's do, hey, let's do one more because we missed. Part of it's the drama, right? It's kind of exciting. My I cat is intensely like... staring at this wheel, waiting for it to spin. <laughs> do one more for 250. Let's do one more for 250, and then let's do a 500. One more extra winner. Oh, man. Alan. Hi, kid. Congratulations. Okay. One more. Next gen console. Last one, drum roll. Come on, big money. So glad Wheel of Fortune is still playing. I love that show. Thomas Marcus, congratulations. You can pick either a PS5 or a uh, Xbox Series X, um, or you can take the cash. So um, congratulations uh, to everybody who won. You'll get an email from us. Hey, I hope this was cool. Um, again, the, you know, the hope for these events is that we get into a Q&A together, we can dialogue, we can have some good you know, questions, and you've got some folks around you. I saw some, some uh, attendees answering each other's questions, which is like my favorite, so thanks for doing that. I hope this was valuable for everybody. You'll get some stuff coming from us um, to dialogue with you after this event. So $50, if you want to keep having a conversation, um, you'll get a, an offer from somebody on our team about that. So. Appreciate your time. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to do this event with us. See you later. Bye.